to begin by praying that through this message, God would speak to you, he would speak to me, <laughs> he would speak to all of us because we're here. Uh, I love it what Tanya said about being here because of Jesus. That was awesome. It's true. So we want to hear him speak to us. And we believe that when we gather, when two or three people gather together, that he is here in our midst. He's promised that by the power of his Holy Spirit. So why don't we just pray this morning as we prepare to hear his word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you are here, that you love every person here, that you know us intimately. Even before you say a word, we say a word, you know it completely. You've seen us as we're getting ready and come to church here this morning and as we've been, for some of us, talking to you about the things and the needs that are on our heart, the things that grieve us, the things that we're looking to you for answers for. And Lord, if there's those among us who are still searching, I just pray that you would speak to every heart, every heart this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I wanted to also say a huge welcome to um, James Steele, who's down here from Cairns Church. And uh, we love you, James. Welcome. You're part of our church family. So thrilled that you're here now. For those of you who don't know James, you need to get to know him. Um, he and his family were have, well, he grew up in this church. And then with his parents, Jeremy and Sandra Steele, uh, they moved to Papua New Guinea and were missionaries there for nine years and then relocated back to Cairns three years ago um, to really enable Jeremy to step into a new role supporting our International Missions Director, Pastor Barry Silverback. And so James has just finished high school and is about to start studying teaching at Table and is going to jump right into our youth team and things like that. So it's awesome to have you. Is Sandra here as well? Where's she? Hi, beautiful Sandra. Welcome. Let's put our hands together for her as well. Her and Jeremy are a powerful ministry couple. We're my original youth pastors and we just love you guys heaps. So it's great to have you here as well. Also wanted to just share with you um, some sad news, but also something that we can still have hope in the midst of is that beautiful Edna Kerwin. Some of you remember her. She'd sit up the back row with her arms raised in a wheelchair, worshipping Jesus. At 91, just last week, she went to be with the Lord. And so we will miss her worshipful heart. She considered 1030 her congregation, and she just loved Jesus. And so um, it's so good that we know where she is, but we'll miss her terribly. Um, but if you want to attend her funeral, Pastor Mick is going to take it. Praise God. Go for it, Mick. Um, at Enfield Memorial Park in Acacia Chapel, this Thursday at 10.45 a.m. So if you'd like to go and celebrate Edna's life, um, please do so. She was a legend. And we'll see her again, which is awesome. Now I'm going to jump straight in this morning because we're talking about Devoted. We're continuing this series. This is week two. And uh, we can't sort of mince around it. We can't, we can't, you know, just pretend that discipleship or following Jesus is always easy, right? Because it's not always easy, <laughs> but it's worth it. Because he calls us to live the life he's made us for. Made us for, to worship him, to know God as our heavenly father and to do as much good as we can to human beings as he's called us to outwork his call. And uh, the, the reality is that Jesus doesn't shy away from telling us the truth about this because discipleship requires growth. If you're a follower of Jesus, part of the whole thing of who you are as a follower of Christ is that you're an apprentice to the master. You haven't actually finished growing yet. You haven't arrived yet. <laughs> There's so much more you can discover about who he is and what he's done for you. And there's so many ways that we can grow more like him. In John 15, Jesus talked about his followers. He talked about his disciples and he said, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. In another translation, it says, 
the vine dresser. My father is the vine dresser. I'm going to talk about that a bit later. But he says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. And we can hear that and think, oh my goodness, I'm not really growing as much as I should. Oh no, 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 no. If you're a follower of Jesus, you will never be cut off from him (laughs) because you are in Christ and nothing can separate you from his love, okay? He's talking about there's going to come a day when he returns and each one of us stand before him and give an account for our life. And people who say, yeah, yeah, um, I've done all the right things, but don't have this personal relationship with him where the spirit comes into your life and he actually produces Christ-likeness in you. He actually makes you more like Jesus. People who've never confessed him or received him, that's what he's talking about. People who actually were never really his disciples in the first place, even though they might be going through the motions because there's no relationship with him. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does